Welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, we're going to be tackling Simplicity Pattern 2172. You can see the number right here. This pattern is available on simplicity.com. We're going to be doing a series of videos tackling the steampunk dress that you see here. In this particular video, we're going to be doing the skirt portion, but be sure to check out our other two videos for the other two components, such as the jacket and the bustier. When you pick up your envelope, make sure you pick up your right size. The sizes are listed up here at the top, so you want to make sure you pick up the envelope with the correct size. Next, we're going to be showing you exactly what the skirt looks like that we're going to be tackling today. Here's the skirt that we're going to be completing today. As you can see, it has a nice fitted waist. There's a zipper in the back that you can't see, and it's gathered at the top in order to create fullness, and it has a really nice pleated panel at the bottom. So let's see what we're going to need in order to complete this project. The first thing we're going to see when we flip our pattern envelope over is up here at top box, fabrics. So this is going to be a list of suggested fabrics that they recommend you using for these projects. So you see a long list here, and this is not saying that these are the only type of fabrics you can use. If you find a fabric you like that's similar in weight to these fabrics, go ahead and use them. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Here we have notions. So this is additional items that you're going to need in order to complete this project. The first thing listed is thread. So for all your projects, for all your fabric, you're going to need matching thread and it's fine if you use all-purpose thread. It's probably recommended just to use the all-purpose thread. Next, we have them separated out into different projects. So you have the coat, the bustier, and the skirt. So behind each of these categories, they're telling you what you need specifically in order to complete that specific project. So for the coat, I'm going to need four 7 8 inch buttons two small swivel hooks and one decorative pin. Now I know that the swivel hooks and the decorative pin is for accessorizing the jacket. So if you want to do the way that they have it exactly, then go ahead and purchase these additional items. If you kind of want to put your own spin and do your own decorations, then you could probably just get the four buttons that are listed behind the coat. And it's going to be the same thing for the bustier. So you're going to need a 12 inch separating zipper. Make sure that it says separating. And then you need a hook and eye and 14 3 8 inch buttons. The skirt needs one 7 inch zipper and a hook and eye. Next we're going to get to body measurements. So this is going to tell you what size you're going to be. You're going to match up these measurements as best you can. And then you're going to come down and you're going to see what size it is. So we have the bust, waist, and hip. So what you're going to do is go across for the bust, find out which one works, and see if the waist and hip also fits. Then you're just going to go down and you're going to see what size you are. So if you need more help on finding out your body measurements, go ahead and watch our tutorial on how to take your measurements for sewing on our website because that will give you a clear idea on how to use this and how to find out what size you are. Once you know what size you're going to be using, then it's really easy to figure out how much fabric you're going to need. So down here we're looking at skirt and you'll see two sections. We have 45 and 60. This is the width of the fabric you're using. So if you're using 45 inch width fabric, then you're going to be using this row. If you're using 60 inch width fabric, then it's this bottom row right here. To find out what width your fabric is, you can read it on the end of the fabric bolt. And if you need help in finding this information, you can check out our tutorial on fabric bolt reading. So once we have our size, all you need to do is pick which width it is. For instance, I'm doing 60 inch width and I'm going to go over until I get to my size. And you know it's your size because you're going to go down the column where your size is listed. So mine is size 12, so I'm going to go down this column and then 60 inch, so I'm going down this row. And so mine is going to be 5 and 7 eighths yards. So that's a total amount of fabric that you're going to need in order to complete the skirt. If I was doing 45 inch fabric, again, I'd go across the row, find the column that has size 12 going down this way, so I'd need 6 and 1 eighth yards. So definitely with the wider fabric, you don't need to get as much. That's the nice thing about that. Then underneath it says interfacing. So in addition to the fabric, we're also going to need some interfacing in order to complete this. 
So what's nice is it doesn't matter what size, everybody's gonna need the same amount. And this is one and one quarter yards of 20 to 25 inch width of lightweight fusible interfacing. So usually interfacing comes in this width, so you always need one and a quarter yards for that. So once you have those, then you're ready to start cutting out your pieces. Pull out the first page of your directions and you'll see something like this. So over here, we have the front and back views of the different items we're gonna be making. And over here is a diagram, which is a breakdown of all the pattern pieces that are included in this pattern. You'll see there'll be a number next to each of them. These numbers go with this little handy list down here. So you can see here, coat front has a number one. So this piece, number one, is right here. The nice thing what they did is they grouped all of the different components together. So for instance, if you're making the coat, you'll see all these coats are all grouped together. So you don't have to keep jumping around if you're just making the coat. So one through 14 is for the coat. So if you're gonna do the coat, you need to cut out all these pieces and they show you all the shapes up here. For the bustier, you're gonna cut out pieces 15 through 19 and for the skirt, it's gonna be 20 through 24. So that's the breakdown of the pieces that you need to cut out of your tissue paper. Here's an example of one of the pattern pieces that's on our tissue paper. So if you remember in the last part, I talked about the numbers that you would have to cut out depending on what you're going to make. You need to keep track of those numbers because if you look at this pattern piece, there's a number right here. So if I was doing the boussier, then I would definitely need to cut out piece number 15. Now when you're cutting it out, what you need to be careful of is that you're cutting out the right size. You'll see here and here we have a series of lines. These are the different sizes that are just printed as one pattern piece and then you just cut on the line depending on what size you're cutting out. So if I'm doing my size, the size 12, I would be cutting out on this line right here because there's size 12 and there's a little arrow that points to that line. If I was doing a six, again, I would follow the six, the line, which points to this outside line. So I'd start here and I would cut along and carefully try to keep track of it as soon as it turns this corner here, the 12 is now suddenly the outside line. So it comes out and then I just go on the outside. So that's how they, they help you out here. Now, if you're doing a line like this, which has no lines, no numbers, this means that for all sizes, you're gonna cut along this line. And when I cut, you're either gonna cut directly on the line or I like to cut a little bit outside the line. I like to still see my line when I'm using my pattern pieces. You also have some notches. Right here, I have two notches together. This is a double notch. So I would definitely want to mark this on my pattern when I'm cutting it out. What I like to do is cut out, cut across, and then cut back down. Or some people like to do the little inverted notches, or you can do two notches, two triangles right next to each other. Now here you'll see notches, but there'll be a series of them. You only need to cut out the notch for your size. So this one right here on top is for size 12. If you go a little bit in, this is gonna be size 10, here's eight and here's six. So you don't need to cut out all these notches, just the one that's on your line. And it's the same thing right here. They all look like they're stacked on top. You just need to cut the one. So that's a single notch. So once you have all your pattern pieces cut out, we can then get to putting it on our fabric. And if it's a little hard for you to deal with because there's a lot of creases and wrinkles, you can go ahead and press your pieces. Just make sure that you're using a cool or slightly warm iron. You don't wanna singe your tissue paper. So you just wanna be careful if you do decide to press it. Now we're ready to start laying out our pattern pieces on our fabric. And it may not seem like we have a lot of pattern pieces for the skirt, but as you can see from this map, there's actually quite a bit that we need to do. So this is the recommended way that the pattern company suggests that we lay out our pattern pieces so that we can make the most of the fabric and make sure that we can get everything fitted onto the pieces that we have cut out. So what we have here is the title of the layout here. And you'll see at the bottom, it says cutting layouts continue on page two. So this is just telling us that we just flip the page over for the rest of it, because this is at the bottom of page one. So this right here is telling us that for this view, 
it's for if you have 44 or 45 inch fabric. So if you have 58 or 60 inch fabric, then you're gonna flip the page and you're gonna look on the other side, which I'm gonna do in a minute. But first let's go over 44 or 45. So if this is your width of your fabric, you're gonna follow a layout similar to this. And what you're gonna do is, you'll see we have 21 here several times. This little skinny piece up here, this is actually 24. They just couldn't fit it in, so they put the number above. And then we have 20. All three of these are 20. We have 23 here, and then 22 are these two pieces here. Again, it's just too small, so they put the numbers off to the side. So what this is telling me when I look at it is that I am going to cut out some pieces several times, such as 21, 20, and even 23 and 22 because we're gonna need several pieces of these same size patterns. So let's first look at this one right here in the middle. So this is saying double thickness. What this means is the fabric is folded in half. So when I cut out one piece, I'm gonna end up with two. And for piece 21, this is our bottom panel with the, the pleats that's gonna be on the bottom of the skirt. We need to have nine pieces of this. So if I cut this out four times, I'm going to end up with eight. And then over here, you'll see single thickness. This is just saying open up the fabric and you're only gonna cut out one of 21. So that way you get nine of them total. So it's not gonna be nine pairs, it's just nine total pieces of 21. And even though this appears to be on some kind of fold, it doesn't actually say fold, so you're not gonna put the piece on the fold. So it's just gonna be two separate pieces with each cut that you're doing. Now right here, these are the arrows that appear on our pattern piece. So when you lay them out, you just need to make sure that the arrows are all going in the same direction. So in this case, they're going parallel to our salvages right down here. So I wouldn't do one 21 piece this way and then flip it and do the 21 piece going in this direction. You need to make sure it's all going the same way so that way, if we're dealing with a fabric that has nap, which means it has some sort of texture to it, it's gonna all match up together. So as we're doing all these pieces here in 21, we're also gonna go ahead and lay uh, piece 24 above it. You don't need to bump it up right next to it, maybe give it a little bit of space if there's room. So then we get two pieces of 24. We're also gonna be dealing the same thing with 20. So you have one pattern that's number 20, but you're gonna cut it out three times. And you'll see down here, it says fold. So that means you're gonna fold the fabric and then you're gonna lay piece 20 right on the fold. So you're only gonna be cutting out on three sides here. So once I cut it out, I'll be able to open it up and I'll have a piece that's twice as big as my pattern piece. And again, you wanna make sure they're all going in the same direction. Piece 22, the edge where you have your little arrow brackets are also going to be placed on the fold. You don't have to worry about 23 being placed in the fold, but again, you need to do it twice. In 22, you need to do it twice. So that's for 44, 45. Now I'm gonna flip the page over so we can go ahead and take a look at the other sizes. There we go. So here you see, the setup they recommend for doing if you have 58 and 60 inch fabric. And here you'll see sizes. So this is the layout you would do if your size falls into this grouping right here. Now if I move this over, you'll see another 58 and 60. And this is the layout they suggest if you do, for, if you do size 20 or 22. So that's why you'll see two of them that say 58, 60. But you'll see it's the same sort of thing. Here's the fold, we're doing three 20s, two 24s, and here's the 21. Again, this one doesn't need to be put on the fold. It's just 20, and then the, here we have the double thickness again. So we're gonna get a total of nine pieces of 21. Here's two 23. And for 22, what they're doing, why it looks a little odd, is folded in half. They go ahead and pin it, they cut it out, and then they flip it over and they cut it out. So this is instead of placing it on the fold. Now if you have enough fabric, you can go ahead, fold it and do 22 on the fold twice, just like we did for the 44, 45. But if you don't, if you're not able to do it on the fold, this is how they recommend that you do it. 
So I'm not going to go over this one because it's basically the same thing. And then the last thing we need to cut out of our skirt is the interfacing. So single thickness, so it's not folded in half. You're just cutting out pieces 24. You're cutting out 23 twice. And you'll see the white means that the, the pattern is right side facing up. So you're reading the pattern with the letters all going the right way. And then when it has the shaded, that means that the pattern is upside down. So you're flipping the pattern over and you're doing the opposite as you're doing here. And then here we're doing a 22 and you just need to cut out one, but you need to cut out half, flip it over so they're butting up against each other. So you get one piece that looks exactly like the shape here, because that's gonna be important. So that's what you need to uh, pay attention to when you're cutting out all your pieces for making the skirt. I just wanna point out a couple of things before we start cutting everything out. So the first thing is, make sure you pre-treat your fabric. So if, you're, if you plan on washing your skirt or dry cleaning it or whatever, that you do it before cutting it out of your fabric. So that way you don't have to worry about it shrinking after you've already made it. The next thing is, we're gonna take a look at this note up here, and it says, determine finished length before cutting. So what this is telling us is that this is not going to be like other skirts and dresses where you'll be able to hem it up as much as you want when you're making it. We kind of have to figure that out now because we have the pleating panel at the bottom and it's just gonna make it a little bit harder to do it. So what you need to do is take a look at the back of the pattern envelope and here we have the finished garment measurement. So this is telling us this is what's going to be the finished measurements for everything we're making. So the skirt length, what they're saying right here is that no matter who you are or what size you do, the finished length of the skirt is going to be 40 inches. So what you need to do is use a tape measure, maybe have somebody help you, measure from your waist down and see if 40 inches is gonna to be too long, too short, or perfect. If it's perfect, fine, just go ahead. You don't have to worry about doing anything. If it happens to be too long, like in my case, because I'm short, what I would do is I would shorten the pieces 20 because 20 is just a rectangle and it's really easy to do that. So I'm gonna determine that I need to shorten it three inches straight from the get-go. It just makes it a whole lot easier if you do it right at the beginning so you don't have to worry about trimming your fabric or anything like that. So here's the side that's placed on the fold, the bottom of the skirt. So on my pattern, I'm only gonna do is just fold it under three inches. And I would do that before I even pin it to my fabric. So when I cut it out, it's already three inches shorter. Now, if you wanna lengthen it, get, use some of your extra tissue paper, or you can just use regular like gift wrapping tissue paper if that's what you had, and just add additional inches if you need it to be longer because you happen to be really tall. And that's all you have to do in order to make sure that the skirt is going to be the length that you want it. So once you've figured that out, once you've pre-treated your fabric, go ahead and pin it and you're gonna take your straight pins and you're gonna place them parallel to the edge of the pattern and then just cut right along the line just like you do when you're cutting out your pattern pieces. Don't forget to cut out any of your notches that you have on your pattern pieces because those are gonna come into play when we're putting it together and doing all that. So now we're gonna go ahead, cut out our fabric and then we're gonna get started on starting to put our pieces together. So I just wanna show you an example really quick of shortening the pattern. So here's number 20, and I have it laid out like you would lay it out on the fabric. You can see the little brackets here. Whenever you have these brackets with the arrows pointing down to the edge of the pattern, that usually means that this is the, the side that's gonna be placed on the fold. So here's the top of my pattern piece, and I know it's the top because it has the writing, and if I was to flip this the other way, the writing would be right side up. So here's the top. And then the side that has no writing down here, this is the bottom. So all I would do is grab a pencil and a ruler or your sewing gauge, measure from the bottom. So for example, I'm gonna do three inches. So I would just mark all the way down. And then I would just fold it. I mean, I guess you could cut it off if you want, but I hate destroying patterns because maybe I made a mistake or something like that. So once I have it folded across, can either like pin it over here to hold it or tape it or something like that on the back. So you would just do the opposite if you are going to extend it. Just cut out a strip of tissue paper for the length that you need to add. So down here, and then I would just tape it 
to the bottom of the skirt portion. So that's all you need to do. Make sure to transfer any marks you have on your pattern pieces to your fabric pieces. So the big one in this particular case is going to be these pleat lines. So you see I have my solid lines here and I have a broken line here. You're gonna to wanna to transfer these lines to all nine pieces that you cut out out of pattern piece 21, which is the skirt band. So if I lift this up here, you can see my marks here. Now, normally when I make my marks, I do it to the wrong side of my fabric. But in this particular case, because this is for the creation of the pleats and I'm mostly working with the right side of the fabric when I create it, I made sure that I transferred all my marks to the right side of my fabric that I'm gonna be working with. The other marks that you're gonna see as well are gonna be these little dots like this. So you just have to find the circle that corresponds with your size. So in my case, I'm doing 12, so I would just do this one. So that's gonna be the mark that I'm gonna to need to transfer to my fabric pieces. And you can see I have one real faintly right there. So after you have all your marks transferred, then you're ready to start sewing. All right, so now we're ready to start going through the directions. And you'll notice at the top of each section, there'll be a name associated with the directions below it. So in this particular case, we wanna find the one that says skirt. Now on the right hand side, you have your written directions and there's numbers in front of them. These numbers correspond to the pictures on the left hand side. So normally what I like to do is read the directions and then look at the picture to help me figure it out. And these pictures, if you're looking at a solid white or no pattern, that means that's the wrong side of your garment. And if it has sort of a textured dotted thing going on, that's gonna be the right side of the garment in this particular case. So that way it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. For our tutorial, we're actually going to be reading the written directions with you and then showing you exactly what they mean so you can easily put together your skirt. Number one, with right sides together, stitch two front and back sections together along notched edges, leaving open above notch and two edges free. Back stitch at notch to reinforce seam. This will be your center back seam. All right, so for this step, we're gonna be working with pieces that come from pattern piece number 20. So this is the ones that were placed on the fold and I have one here and it's right side facing up and you can see I have my side notch here and then I have a notch up here at the top. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one more of those pieces because you have three total. So we're gonna be working with two right now and I'm gonna place it with right sides together. And this may look shiny to you. I'm actually using the shiny side to be on the inside of my skirt and using the mat to be the outside because it's double-sided fabric. So that's why it might be a little confusing. But I'm making sure I'm doing right side to right side. And I'm gonna line up these edges. And then I'm just gonna grab my straight pins and I'm going to pin all along this edge here. Now, when you go to your machine to do your seam allowance, and the seam allowance for this particular directions are 5 eighths of an inch. So whenever we do a seam, it's always 5 eighths of an inch unless otherwise stated. So we're just gonna keep that in mind whenever we do a seam. When we do our seam, we're just doing a regular width stitch, and you're stitching from this notch down to the bottom. So everything above this notch is gonna stay open because this is eventually where we're gonna place our zipper in the back of the skirt. So this is now gonna be designated the center back seam. So that's what they mean by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my straight pins and when I place my pins, I'm placing them perpendicular to the edge of the fabric here. That way it's a little easier to take them out when I'm stitching. And I'm just gonna pin both pieces together and then just take it to my machine so I can do that 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to be starting my seam right at my notch right here on my center back and I'm going to make sure that I definitely do a few back stitches here because we really want this area to be reinforced and that's written in your directions. And then I'm just going to continue down until I get to the bottom of the skirt portion. Whenever you do any of your seams, don't forget to press your seam open and then it'll look really nice and neat from the right side. When I get to the bottom, I'm gonna again do another back stitch. 
Here's my finished center back seam right here. So now I have two of my 20s stitched together and it's really, really long. So I just folded it up a little bit. That's why it looks a little weird so that you'll be able to see the middle and also the sides. So we're gonna do the first part of step two now. Stitch remaining skirt section to skirt back at side front seams. So you're gonna take your last 20 piece. So it's just like one of these. And it's gonna be the same thing where you're gonna put right side, so this is right side facing up. And I'm gonna put right side to right side. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is all facing the right way. So obviously, if I stretch out my bottom piece here, it's gonna be longer than this piece I'm putting on top. So you're not expecting it to be the same length. But what you're going to do is you're gonna match up these sides. So the sides that have the notches, again, are going to match up. And then you're going to pin and stitch your 5 8 seam allowance from here to the very top. You're not leaving it open above the notch this time. That's only for the center back seam so we can do the zipper. From the very top to the very bottom, you're gonna do a stitch. Then you're gonna take this and you're gonna bring it over to this side and you're gonna do the same thing. Pin it, stitch it from bottom to top. So once that's done, you're gonna have a circle part of your skirt completed. Now we have these notches up here at the top. You can see one here and I have one here. You only need these notches for the area where you have the, the zipper or the center seam here. So, cause that kind of designates that this is the back. So for these other sides, you can just go ahead and trim it off so you don't confuse yourself. But I mean, we're gonna know what the center back is because this is open anyways, but you can cut it off if you want. But for right now, I'm just gonna pin the sides, pin the side, and do my 5 8 inch seam allowance. At this point, you have something that kind of resembles a skirt, but it's gonna be really big, which is fine because the top of the skirt is going to be gathered. So we definitely want it to be big because when we gather it, it's gonna to add to the fullness of the skirt. So let's go ahead and start with direction number, or finish direction number two. So it says to gather upper edge of skirt between back notches, stitch a long seam line and quarter inch inside the seam line using a lawn machine stitch. So this is gonna start prepping us for the gathering of the top. So here's the top of my skirt. Here's my opening of the center back seam and my two notches. So starting at one back notch, you're going to baste. So that's gonna be the largest stitch you can do on your machine. You're not gonna do any back stitching because we need to make sure that we're able to pull the thread and gather the fabric. So again, starting here at the 5 8 inch line, so just at your normal seam allowance, and you're not stitching in anything together, it's just a single piece of fabric, you're stitching directly on it. So you're gonna start here and you're gonna go all the way around the whole top of the circumference of the skirt, stop here. Again, no back stitching. After you do that one, so that's at the 5 8 you're gonna go in a quarter of an inch and then you're gonna do the same exact thing again, stopping over here. And the reason why you're doing two is because we're gonna be pulling the threads in or order to gather them. And if you do one, chances are it's gonna break. So just by doing two and pulling them at the same time, it gives strength and helps with the gathering. So I'm gonna go ahead and break out my machine so I can do it. So again, one at 5 8 one at a quarter inch into that, and you're gonna do the longest stitch you can do on your machine, no back stitching, starting here, going all the way around, stopping here. I've already done my first basting stitch right here at the 5 8 inch, so now I'm gonna do my other one, again, starting at my back notch here, and I'm doing it just a quarter of an inch inward from that towards more of the edge here, so it would be kind of like doing a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And remember, you're not doing any back stitch, and I'm just doing it till I get to the other side. We're gonna change gear now with step three. So now we're gonna be dealing with the skirt band. So this is the lower part of the skirt where it has the pleats. And let's see, the first part of step three, with right sides together, stitch skirt band sections together, press seams to one side in same direction. So here's one of the pieces of my skirt band. So you should have nine total. This is piece pattern piece number 21. So I have it right side facing up, and there should be one long side, and then we have a short side with a notch. So I'm gonna have this one, again, right side facing up. I'm gonna grab another one. 
So this is also piece 21. And I'm gonna place them right side to right side, making sure that the notches match up. If it doesn't match, just flip it around the other way. Like if I was to flip it this way, you'll see that I have a notch up here and then a notch down here. So it doesn't match, just flip it around. And now they match. So what I'm gonna do is line this up and I'm gonna make sure that the ends match here. I'm gonna pin it, 5 8 inch seam allowance, go ahead and stitch those pieces together. And then you're just gonna grab another piece of your, your skirt band, so 21, and you're going to attach it to this end. So you're basically creating one long giant piece stitching all of your 21 pieces together. So that's pattern piece 21. They're all gonna be stitched into one long piece. And once you get to the very end, so all nine of them are stitched together, you're then gonna take the, if this was the last one, I'm just gonna take this and put it to the right side of my original piece. So then you have one giant huge circle of your skirt bands. So once you have that, instead of pressing your seams open like you normally do, you're gonna keep them closed and you're gonna press them so all your seam allowance is going one way. Instead of open, they stay closed and you just press them to the side. Now, it doesn't matter if I go this way or if I go that way, it's your choice, but whatever direction you pick, you keep it consistent and you do the same direction for all nine of your pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we can finish step number three. The second part of instruction number three is press under hem allowance on lower edge of band. To form narrow hem, tuck under raw edge to meet crease, press stitch hem into place. So here I have my skirt band and you can see one of my seam allowances right here and it's pressed in one direction. So they want us to do the hem on the bottom edge of the band. And the way you know the bottom is because we're gonna use our notch right here as our guide. So this notch is closer to this edge than it is to this edge. So this is the top, this is the bottom. So that's how I know where the bottom is. Now the hem allowance is 5 eighths of an inch. And I know that because if you look at pattern piece number 21, at the bottom of the pattern, it'll say hem allowance 5 eighths of an inch included. So that's how I know what it is. So all along this bottom edge, and you're doing it for the whole skirt band, you're looking at the wrong side of the band and I'm going to press up 5 eighths of an inch. So grab my straight pins and I'm just gonna pin it into place. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around. Now once I have it all done, go ahead and take it to your ironing board and press it all into place. So that way you have a nice crease down here. So this crease is now gonna come in handy because the next step is you're gonna undo maybe one pin at a time. You're gonna take this raw edge now and you're gonna fold it under to meet that crease that you just created like that, and then pin it back into place. Like that. So you have a nice folded, crisp, clean edge on this side and the same thing on top. So then once you have that all the way around, you can go ahead and press it so then it looks nice and neat. And what we're gonna do lastly for number three is you're going to stitch right along this top folded inner edge. So that's gonna stitch this hem into place for your skirt band. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing all my pressing so I can create the narrow hem. When I'm stitching my narrow hem, I'm just gonna make sure, like here's the, my top fold line that I'm stitching right next to it. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm not going over it, but I'm not going too far down towards this edge either. And I'm just using a regular with stitch and I'm going all the way around till the whole narrow hem is stitched down. So now we're gonna create our pleats in our skirt band. So this is gonna cinch it up so it fits at the bottom of our skirt portion. 
So step number four, to make pleats on outside fold along solid lines, bring folds to broken lines, pin, press pleat flat along a tire length based across raw edge. So here is our pattern piece for number 21. And you'll notice that there's the solid lines and then there's the broken lines. It also has a nice direction here showing that your pleats are being folded in this direction. So all you're gonna do is this, these lines should already be transferred to your fabric. I'm gonna fold right along a solid line. And it's definitely a little easier to do in your fabric than on paper. And then you're just gonna bring it to a broken line. And there's your first pleat. So you're just gonna stick in pins so you can hold it. So let me move this out of the way. And here's one section, here's one seam allowance. And you'll notice, I have this right side facing up, but you'll notice that it starts with a broken line, not a solid line. That's because you're supposed to take the solid line from the section in front of it and bring it over the top of your seam allowance. So once you create your pleat, it will hide the seam allowance, which is nice. But I'm gonna start right here. So I'm gonna fold it, bring it to the broken line. Again, I'm moving in this direction. Grab my pins here. And I'm gonna pin the two sections together. And I'm actually pinning all the way down because I'm gonna press this whole thing. I want a nice crisp pleat. And then once I have it, I'm just gonna quickly pin this. So I would put more pins in it to hold it, but just for now it's gonna work. So now I'd move to the next solid line. I would fold it and bring it to the next broken line. And you're just gonna do this for the whole skirt band. So it's just gonna be full of pleats. And then once you're done and you've pressed it so it's all nice and neat looking, on the top of the skirt band. So here's the side that has the narrow hem. So this is the top. You're gonna baste across, so you're using your largest stitch all the way down. So that's gonna keep your pleats stitched into place until we're ready to stitch it to our skirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. And then we're gonna move on to step number five. Step five. With right sides together, pin band to lower edge of skirt, stitch, press seam towards skirt, pressing band out. So here's my skirt band with the pleats and also my basting stitch up here at the top. So what we're gonna do is match the top of the skirt, so that's the part that you just did your basting stitch, with the bottom portion of the pieces that came from pattern 20. So that's the top part of the skirt. So I'm gonna make sure that this is my right side facing out I'm going to take the top of my skirt, number 20, with the wrong side facing out because I wanna match up right side to right side. Now on your skirt, you have the, the portion that has the two basting stitches, that's the top. So I'm gonna flip this around. So I have the side, it doesn't have any stitching and it doesn't have any opening for a zipper. So here's the bottom of my skirt. I'm gonna match this edge with the top edge of the pleat band right here. And then I'm just gonna pin it, and once it's all pinned up, I'm gonna take it to my machine and do a seam. And again, this is gonna be the 5 8 seam allowance. So I'm just gonna pin everything up and stitch it. And then once you're done with that, you're going to press these two pieces apart and this seam allowance is gonna go up towards the top of the skirt. So you're not pressing it open, you're just pressing everything upwards towards the top. Step number six, apply fusible interfacing to the wrong side of skirt yoke front and skirt yoke back following the manufacturer's directions. Stitch yoke sections together at side seams. So what you have is piece number 22 and piece number 23. Now when you originally cut them out, you should have cut out two of 22 and four of 23. But for this section, we're only going to be applying the interfacing to one 22 and two of the 23s. Now make sure when you lay out your 23s, when you have the wrong side facing up towards you, 
you should have the notches on opposite ends. That's how we know it's all going to match. The other set of these pieces we're going to save for another step where we're going to be using it as a facing. But for this point, we're just going to be applying the inner facing. So I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm just going to move these out of the way and I'll just show you on this piece right here. So I have the wrong side facing up on my fabric right there. And here is my inner facing. And I like to cut it a little bit smaller than my piece. Now on one side of the inner facing, it'll feel slightly bumpy and the other side will be smooth. So this side with the bumps, that's going to go to the wrong side of your piece. So I'm just going to carefully lay it down. Take a cotton cloth, carefully lay it over to make sure that you don't shift your inner facing. Then I'm just going to dampen it. My iron has already been heating up, so I'm just going to press it down over my fabric and you'll kind of hear it sizzle a little bit and that means it's fusing the inner facing to my piece. So after I lay it down for about five seconds, I carefully lift it up and then I move it to a different section so I can cover the whole piece and make sure that the fusible inner facing is adhering to my yoke. And I can just test it by seeing if it lifts up. Like right there, I would probably want to redo. But that's what you need to do. So you're going to want to do it to the 122 and two of the 23. Now you're going to take your yoke pieces and see, you can see I have the inner facing attached to it already. So this is the front and this is the back and we're going to attach them at the side. So right here with the notches, you're going to match them with your notches up here. Make sure that you place them right side to right side. So you're going to be seeing the inner facing. Just going to attach them on the sides, matching up the notches and the edges. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Then just take it to your machine, do your 5 8 inch seam allowance, and press your seams open. Step 7. With right sides together, pin yoke to upper edge of skirt matching centers and placing seams at small dots. Pull up gathering stitches to fit. Baste. So here's my yoke. They're stitched together, the front stitched with the back pieces. And you can see there's an outer curve with two notches and an inner curve with four notches. This outer curve here with the two notches, this is the edge that I'm going to match with the top of my skirt. So let me grab my skirt. So here's the top of my skirt. Here's the gathering stitches that we did at the top. And here is the center back seam where we left it open in order to put in our zipper. So I'm going to start at one edge of that, of my opening. And you'll see we have a notch here at the back. And I'm going to match it up with the notch here on my outer curve of my yoke. Now obviously the top of our skirt is big and the yoke is not as big. So that's why we need to pull our gathering stitches that's on the skirt. Let me just remove this real quick. So I'm just grabbing the two from the front of my fabric. You have your two back stitches back here, but I'm just grabbing the front ones, holding it with one hand, and then I'm going to pull my fabric. And you'll see it start to gather. And all I have to do is just adjust my gathering so it moves down. And that way I can distribute the gathering more evenly. So this is what you're going to do in order to get everything to line up. So I'm matching up the notches. And then on your front yoke piece, there should have been some dots that you should have transferred over. So these circles get matched to the side seams of the skirt, which is down here somewhere. Here it is. So I'm just going to match that up. And you'll see how much skirt I have in ex excess to this area. So I'm going to have to gather it quite a bit in order to get this portion to fit properly. So I'm going to go ahead and start pinning and gathering. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. 
With the top of the skirt gathered and your yoke pinned to the top, you're starting to see that the top of your skirt is getting to be a more manageable size. So once you have this done, all you have to do is go to your machine and baste the yoke to the top of the skirt. So you're going to be doing your largest stitch. You don't have to worry about doing any back stitching because it's just a temporary stitch to hold our yoke to the top of our skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let's take the first part of step eight. Stitch yoke facing sections together at side seams. So here are the other pieces I have of 22 and 23. So this is just like the other yoke pieces except this side is not going to have any interfacing. So just like we did before, you're gonna take the front facing, so 22, and you're gonna match up the ends with the back facing right here of 23. So I'm just gonna match up the notches on this side and do the same thing on this side. Then you're just going to do your 5 8 inch seam allowance and press that open as well. For the second part of step 8, you're going to do something very similar that we just did with the yoke. So for the facing, you're going to match up this outer curve of the facing with the two notches with the top of the skirt, but this time you're placing it on the inside of the skirt. So it's going to be this right side to the wrong side of the skirt. So I'm going to bring the skirt in here a little bit more. Oops, let's try that again. There we go. So I have the right side of my facing to the wrong side of my skirt. Matching up the end notches here at the opening where my zipper is going to go at the center back seam. And I'm just going to pin all along the top. It should be easier now that everything's gathered and everything's basted down. So it should be pretty simple at this point. Now once you have everything pinned, you have the facing pinned to the top of your skirt, Instead of basting, you're now going to do your 5 8 inch seam allowance at the top. So everything is going to be permanently stitched together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then once you finish that, you can go ahead and trim down your seam allowance a little bit. So we're not going to have all this gather and bulk underneath our uh, waistband and facing and stuff. Let's move on to step number nine. Turning yoke and facing right side out, encasing seam and having raw edges even. Baste raw edges together. Here's the top of my skirt so far. So I have on my right side of my skirt, I have the yoke with the inner facing. And on the inside of my skirt, the raw side, I have my facing attached to the top of my skirt as well. And in between, I have my seam and I went ahead and I trimmed it with my pinking shears. So then what you're going to do is you're going to lift up the yoke, lift up the facing. So now the inner curve of both of them are meeting and you're matching up all your notches and the edges. So you're just creating a sandwich. So in between you're going to have your seam and then you have on one side you have the yoke with the inner facing, on one side you have your facing and you're going to pin them all along the raw edges. So now it's starting to look like a skirt with a band at the top. So I'm going to pin this and I'm going to stitch with a basting stitch, so my largest stitch. And you don't have to do a back stitch, it's just to hold them together for the next step. You're going to do the short end right here, so any of these raw edges that have to do with the yoke here. Here and then all along the top, all the way around, coming back to the end of my other side and stitching the short end as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pin these and then baste them and then we can move on to step number 10. We're getting ready to put in our zipper now. So step number 10, press under 5 eighths of an inch on left back opening edge and a half inch on right back opening edge. So here I have the top of my skirt and we're just going to do the first part of step 10 first and uh, then we'll get to the other section. So. I have my skirt right side out. This is the center back seam. Right here is my opening for the zipper. On this side, the right hand side, I'm going to use my sewing gauge and measure out a half inch 
So a half inch is being turned over to the wrong side of my skirt. Once I have that, you can go ahead and use your straight pins to hold it. And I'm going to measure all the way down to the end of my opening here. So once I have a half inch, I'm then going to go to this side over here. So I'm going to take my raw edge and I'm going to fold it over to the inside of the skirt, 5 eighths of an inch. So this side, the right hand side was a half inch, the left hand side is 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to adjust my sewing gauge, do a quick measurement, pin it, and the same thing on this side is you're going to pin all the way to the end of your opening and then you're going to press those open. So we're going to have a nice crease on both sides and that's going to prep us for putting in the zipper. After you have your creases on both the right hand side and the left hand side, so now we're going to be focusing on the right hand side, you're going to take your zipper. This fold right here should line up right on the right hand side of the zipper with the zipper right side up facing you and you're going to start so that the head of the zipper is one inch down from the top of the skirt. So this part of my zipper tape is actually about one inch. So I'm just going to line that up with the top. So the head of the zipper is starting one inch below the top. And I'm just going to use some straight pins here to pin the zipper into place all the way down. And you want to be careful because you do not want your fabric to overlap the zipper teeth because then it'll get caught when you're trying to open and shut your zipper. You just want it right next to it. So I'm just going to pin it all the way down and then we're going to use our uh, zipper foot in order to stitch our zipper into place. When I stitch in a zipper, I'm going to definitely just change my foot to a zipper foot and yours may look differently than mine. They're usually really skinny. It just helps so you can stitch as close to the zipper teeth as you can. I'm using a regular stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. And I actually moved down my zipper tab so it would be a lot easier to sew around it. So you'll see. I'm going to just stitch a little ways and then I'm going to move it back up. So that should be good. So I'm just going to put my needle down, lift my foot. Zip my zipper back up and replace this pin. Definitely makes it a lot easier sewing your zipper if you don't have to worry about that zipper tab getting in the way. And then put down my foot and just stitch all the way back to the end of the zipper and then do another back stitch. Now you're going to take the left hand side and you're going to overlap it with the right hand side. So the fold of your left hand side should go past the teeth of your zipper about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just lining everything up. Again, you're going to straight pin it in order to hold it. And then what you're going to do next is you're going to baste an, a three eighths of an inch from this fold in this direction. So here's my fold. So about right here, three eighths of an inch. I'm going to base down to the edge of my zipper. Once I get to the bottom, here's the bottom of my zipper right here. I'm going to go past the end of the zipper a quarter of an inch and then come across to my seam line. So across and up just like that. So I'm going to baste it. You can, if you feel more comfortable, you can do it by hand or you can do it by machine, whatever you feel more comfortable doing. And then after you have your basting stitches, you're just going to use a regular stitch to stitch over your basting. The basting is just to hold everything together and then you're going to go back with your machine and your zipper foot and you're going to do a permanent regular width stitch just to get the zipper in and then your zipper will be installed. Are you getting excited that it's starting to look like a skirt? Let's work on the waistband with step number 11. Apply fusible interfacing to wrong side of waistband. Press under 5 eighths of an inch on long, unnotched edge of waistband, trim to 1 quarter of an inch. So here's my waistband, and just like you did with the yoke, you're going to apply your fusible interfacing to the wrong side, which I've already done here. 
Now you'll notice on one long edge, you're gonna have notches, and then the other edge, there's no notches. So on this side, the one that doesn't have any notches, you're gonna press up 5 eighths of an inch. So from the right side to the wrong side, 5 eighths of an inch. Once you have all this pressed, this part right here, you're gonna trim it down so that there's only a quarter of an inch left. Step 12, with right sides together, pin garment to band, matching centers, placing side seams at small dots, baste, stitch, trim, seam, press toward band, pressing band out. So let's see here, we'll start at the first thing. So here is my skirt at the top. Here's the opening where I just put in my zipper. And I have it right side facing out. I'm going to take now my waistband that I just trimmed and completed. The right side of my waistband is going to go to the right side of my skirt, right up here at the top of our yoke. And you'll have your first notch. That's going to match up with your notch here on the end. Now it's going to overlap the end of your skirt, and that is what you want. You actually do want it to overlap, and you'll see why when we do our next part. So I'm matching up all the notches. And then on your waistband, you should have a couple of these small dots from your patterns that you transferred over. These dots should match up your seams here in the yoke. So I'm just going to line that up. And then once this is all pinned, you're going to baste it into place. And then you're going to stitch again over your basting. So the basting is just to hold everything together so you can stitch it without any pins. And then you just can go over your basting stitch again with a regular stitch. And don't forget to back stitch on that. So that's going to make everything secured. Once you have all that stitch, I'll show you what to do next. Once you have your waistband attached to the top of your yoke here, here's my seam allowance in between them. You're going to go ahead and trim the seam allowance. So you have about, you know, a quarter to three eighths of it left. And then whatever you have left of that, you're going to press the seam allowance towards the waistband. So it's all going to look like this. I'm just going to pull out the waistband and make sure that all my seam allowance is pressed up towards the top of the waistband, just like that. Step 13, fold band with right sides together, stitch ends along seam line, trim seams and corners. So what you're going to do is you're going to take each end of your waistband. Here's one side on the zipper and you can see how much is overlapping. And then here's the other one on the other zipper. So here is the wrong side. You can see the interfacing and my folds that I have on top and bottom. I'm going to flip it over to the right side of the waistband and I'm going to fold it in half. You're not going to undo these little folds or anything. You're going to keep them. Just go ahead, fold it in half and I'm going to pin the ends here. And I would do the same thing on the other end of the waistband. After I pin this, you're going to go ahead and stitch across the end here at your 5 8 inch seam allowance. So you're going to stitch here and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So on the right side of the waistband, I'm going to fold it in half, maintaining my little folds that I had before. And then I'm going to pin across this little short end here. And then stitch my 5 8 inch seam allowance. After you finish stitching, which I have right here, I'm just going to trim it. So I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch left to it. And right up here at the top corner, I'm just going to trim that. Get trim the bottom one too. So we don't have any corners on here. Then you're going to flip it so it's right side out again. See, it's creating a nice little waistband there. I'm going to use my pin to bring out this corner piece like that. I'm just going to fold the whole waistband in half again on the right hand side so that the fold of my waistband is now covering all this seam allowance right there. So once you have done both sides, and you could just press it like this, you can go ahead, press the top of the waistband so you get a nice crease. And then we've already started step 14, so we're just going to finish that. 
and I'm going to show you how to do a slip stitch in order to close your waistband. The next step we're going to hand sew. So to start a slip stitch, what I'm going to do is, and I've already started this one, I'm going to grab a little bit. So I have two sides. I have this side here, and then I have this side back here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of one side, and I like to do it on, not directly on top of the fold, but a little bit on the inside of the fold. Okay. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of the other side. And since I'm on the zipper tape, it's not going to be on a fold. Pull it through. And then I'm just going to go back to my original side, grabbing a little bit of fabric. And then I'm grabbing a little bit of fabric from the opposite side. So you're just zigzagging back and forth between the two sides. Don't make your stitches too large because when you pull it from the side that the yoke's on, it might come through onto the right side of the skirt. So you wanna keep your stitches somewhat small. And you're just gonna do this all along the whole end of the waistband. All right, so now I'm on this side, so now I'm gonna grab a little bit of the yoke fabric. And now I'm gonna grab a little bit of the waistband fabric. And that's it, that's all you have to do in order to do a slip stitch. Okay, we're on our last step, step 15, lap ends a band, fasten hook and eye. So this is just to finish off our top part right here because we have this overlap of our waistband. So you can see I've already stitched on the bar part of my hook and eye. So there are different kinds of hook and eyes. You can have one like they show in their directions, which is more of a bar. I think that's a pants hook and eye, but I just, all I have are these regular ones. So here is my hook part, and this is gonna go connected like that, well, actually connected like this way. I sewed on the bar about a quarter of an inch away from this edge on the right hand side. I'm just gonna slip my hook onto it like that. And let me zip up my skirt a little bit here. Okay, so I'm just carefully holding my hook on there. I'm gonna overlap the two sides. And then with this hand, I'm holding the hook and I'm gonna unhook it. So that way I know exactly where I need to sew it on. Try not to move it. Then I'm just gonna grab some needle and thread and I'm gonna go through each of the little ends here. I'm just gonna sew around them like that. So after you finish that, you can go through your skirt and take off any fabric markers you have. If you have any basting stitches that are showing, you can go ahead and remove those. And after that, you're free to wear your skirt and to enjoy it. Congratulations, you completed it. And here we have the completed skirt from Simplicity Pattern 2172. Don't forget to check out our other tutorials on the bustier and coat that go with this and complete the steampunk dress. Good luck! Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over a hundred sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching!